Hi guys and welcome to the video on dividing rational expressions. So in this video guys we're going to learn how to divide rational expressions and reduce them. Um, just like multiplying it's a skill used for verifying trig identities and reducing complex fractions and you're just you know you're going to be able to do this when you can do it when you can take two rational expressions by a divide that are being divided and simplify them. So the steps for dividing are very similar to the steps for multiplying. In fact, the steps for multiplying are actually contained within the steps for dividing. There's just one additional step on the outside. The first thing is you're going to take the division sign, change it to multiplication, and then you're going to flip, reciprocate, the fraction after the division sign. This is essential because you need to multiply by the reciprocal. Step two factor, step three, cancel, step four, rewrite. So now instead of FCR, it is FFCR, flip, factor, cancel, rewrite. So it used to be just factor, cancel, rewrite. When you do division, you need to do flip, factor, cancel, rewrite. So let's take a look at some examples. Divide the rational expressions. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is flip. So when I do that, um, I'm actually going to take my word flip. Um, I'm going to get x plus 2 over x squared minus 4. And then here's the flip. This is the flip right here. Times x plus uh, x minus 2 on the top over x plus 3. So these switched. Now what I'm going to do is I've got to do any factoring. So I'm going to flip and then I'm going to factor. Um, this can't be factored. This can't be factored. This can't be factored. But this right here, this could be factored because it is x squared minus 4. Um, I happen to remember that that would be the difference of two squares. So uh, I'm going to say it's the difference of two squares. Because I know that x squared is a square, and I know that 4 is a square. So since they're being subtracted, that's the difference of two squares. So the top stays as x plus 2. The bottom is going to become, according to the rule for difference of two squares, x plus 2 times x minus 2. And then that's multiplied by x minus 2 on the top still. After the flip, you keep it, you keep the x minus 2 on the top for the flip over x plus 3. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, switch my pen to red, is I am going to, oops, I'm going to go ahead and cancel. I'm going to start canceling. Um, and my canceling is going to be in red. So I can cancel this x plus 2 with this x plus 2. And then I can cancel this x minus 2 with this x minus 2. So the only thing that I am left with now is I have to rewrite my final answer. And I get a 1 on the top because I canceled everything over x plus 3 on the bottom. And that's it. That's how you would divide these rational expressions here. So divide these rational expressions. Divide the rational expressions here. Um, there's going to be multiple uh, factorings that we're going to have to do. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with that flip. We've got to flip it. So I'm going to need some extra room here. The flip is going to look like this. So I'm going to draw out my 2 on the top. Um, I keep this the same, x squared uh, minus 6x plus 9. On the bottom, 3x minus 6. On the top, now I'm going to flip these two. So then I have x squared minus 4. And on the bottom now is x squared minus 
1x minus 6. Okay, so each thing has to be factored differently. Um, the top here, the top left, so for my factor part, the top left is going to need to be trinomial factored. Um, I can tell um, that it's going to be x minus 3 times x minus 3. And again, I'm thinking of what two numbers multiply to negative or to positive 9 and add to negative 6. Uh, negative 3 and negative 3 multiply to positive 9 but add to negative 6. On the bottom, there's a GCF of 3. So I'm going to factor a 3 out, and I get 3 times x minus 2 multiplied by. Uh, we just saw in the previous example that x squared minus 4 factors into x plus 2 times x minus 2. And then the bottom right one is what two numbers uh, multiply to negative 6 uh, and add to negative 1. One of them is going to have to be positive and one of them is going to have to be negative. Um, since the middle number is negative, it means that the number, the negative number needs to be greater. Um, if I try 6 and 1, that would be negative 5 in the middle. That's not going to work. So it would be negative 3 and positive 2. And you can go ahead and do a, um, a factor x, a factor star, um, like we're used to. I'm just trying to save a little bit of time in writing for this one. Um, so then I'm going to take and cancel. I have an x minus 2 here, and I have an x minus 2 on top. Um, I have an x minus 3 over here and an x minus 3 over here, and then the x plus 2s are directly on top of each other. So the final step, as always, is to rewrite. And when I do, I get x minus 3 at, in the numerator, and I just get 3 in the denominator. OK, so we're doing another one with lots of factoring. Um, again, step one is to flip. So I'm going to flip it. Uh, I've got x squared plus 9x minus 10 over x squared plus x minus 6 times, and remember I'm going to flip these up and down. I'm going to reverse them. Um, x squared minus 4 and x squared minus 1. And so now I need to factor. I'm going to start with the difference of two square sides because it's going to help me explain my thinking for the left side. So x squared minus 4, uh, we've seen that twice now, is x squared, x plus 2, x minus 2. And then the bottom would be x plus 1 times x minus 1. So now when I think about the factors of the left side, what I'm going to think about is that most likely, since all of these problems are about canceling factors, most likely the factors x minus 2, x plus 2, x plus 1, x minus 1 will, might, may show up as the factors that I am looking for over here. So, for example, in the top one, I know that I'm going to have x and x. And again, I'm doing this without the um, factoring stars uh, to save some time in writing, but you should definitely use the factoring stars um, if you don't have factoring 100% down. Um, so I'm taking a look. Uh, the end is negative, negative 10, so it should be a positive and a negative. And the number in the middle is positive. So this has to be positive and this needs to be negative. So the factors of 10 are 5, 2, um, which if you made them different, like if you subtracted them, that would be 3, so that's not going to work. But if you did 10 and 1, 10 and 1, you get 9 in the middle. 
Now, I could have jumped right to that, but I wanted to kind of test out the other ones first. I could have kind of jumped right to that because, look, I know that I have an X minus 1 down here. And because I have it on the bottom, it's very, very likely that it's going to be on the top of my fraction as one of the other factors. So if I had picked X minus 1 to start, then I could have been like, huh, negative 1 plus what equals 9? And then negative 1 times 10 is negative 10. So it helps me out. Using that logic, okay, for the second one, I have X and X. In the middle, I have positive x. On the end is negative 6, so again, a positive and a negative. Um, I'm going to assume, well, it should be either negative 2 or positive 2 um, instead of using 6 and 1. But if I'm going to use 2 and 3 and it adds to 1 in the middle, it needs to be positive 3 and negative 2. So I'm using the other factors that I've done as a clue to help me figure out any remaining factors. Um, and now that I have done so, I can cancel everything that has stuff in common. So x minus 1, top and bottom, x minus 2, top and bottom, and that's all the cancellation that I'm going to get done here. So my final answer, or when I rewrite everything, so rewrite, I've got x plus 10 in parentheses times x plus 2. You do not need to uh, remultiply these back out. I don't need you to foil or do anything like that. Um, that's just going to complicate things. x plus 1. And that's it. That's my completed, that's my completed division of these rational expressions. So moving on to another one. Um, this one is a quadruple trinomial factorization. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this. Okay. It is always flip. And then we're going to factor it. And then we're going to cancel. And then we're going to rewrite. So again, I'm going to not use the stars in order to um, factor stuff, um, only to save time and space. So now um, let's just do it. Um, I'm going to flip. So that one stays the same. This one um, is going to change. So x squared plus 11x plus 24. And then x squared minus 15x plus 56. And then when I flip the other one, so now I'm going to flip the other one, and I get x squared minus 11x plus 28 on, in the numerator now, over x squared minus x minus 12 in the denominator. So now I've got to do my factorizations. I've got 1 and 2. Um, I'm just going to start with the top left numerator. I know that all these are going to break down into these double parentheses. So I'm just going to pre-write them. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to 24 and add to 11. Um, if I think through the factors, I can immediately come up with x plus 8 and x plus 3, which lets me know that some of the factors of the other ones may be either 8 or 3. So we'll find out. Um, if I do the left denominator, x squared minus 15x plus 56, I'm going to get x and x. A positive on the end, but a negative in the middle means double negative. And 56 would be made by 8 and 7. And 8 and 7 add up to negative 15, so that works out. The other side, the, the right numerator, um, again, x and x. It is positive on the end, but negative in the middle. So I have a negative and a negative. And looking around at some of the other factors that have been used, I have plus 8, plus 3, negative 8, negative 7. Um, thinking of factors of 28, I know that 7 is a factor of 28. So I'm going to try a 7 here. 
and negative 7 times negative 4 is positive 28 and adds to negative 11. So I used that that negative 7 that I already have as a clue. Like I tried it out and I'm like, hey, that works. So I used it as a clue. And I'm going to do the same thing for the um, right denominator. It's going to be x and x. And um, it's a negative on the end, so I have one positive and one negative, and it is negative in the middle, so the negative number needs to be greater. Um, so I'm thinking of factors of 12 that I already have. I have a 4, so we'll try a negative 4, and a positive 3. So negative 4 plus 3 is negative x in the middle, and so that factors perfectly. And now that I have all those, I can factor everything, or I can cancel everything out pot that's possible. So x plus 8, unfortunately, does not have anything on the bottom. It has x minus 8, but it is not the same. It's not exactly the same, so I can't cancel it. But x plus 3 has an x plus 3. x minus 7 has an x minus 7. And the x minus 4s will cancel out, leaving me with a reduced expression of x plus 8 divided by x minus 8. And there it is rewritten. So one more problem for you guys. And this is the one where um, we are, I am going to take a little more time to use the factoring squares or the factoring stars because um, there are, this is the um, more difficult version of factoring. So the first thing we've got to do is flip it. So 9x squared plus 12x plus 4 over 4x squared minus 27x minus 7. And then times um, 16x squared minus 1 over 12x squared plus 5x minus 2. Um, oddly enough, I am going to start with the, um, the right side numerator. Um, I can kind of already tell that this and this are both perfect squares. So it's difference of two squares up top again. Um, I know that 16 is a perfect square. So I'll have 4x plus 1 times 4x plus minus 1. And if you multiply them out again, 4x times 4x gets you 16x squared. 1 times 4x gets you um, 4x. 4x times negative 1 is negative 4x, causing the x's to cancel. And then positive 1 times negative 1 is this negative 1 that we have originally. So that's not, that'll um, be exactly what we started with. So I'm going to take uh, the 9x squared plus 12x plus 4, and I'm going to do the, uh, the work over up on the top of the screen. So 9 times 4 gets you 36, and 12 in the middle, and we're going to put a 9x and a 9x. And so what we're going to do is look for two factors of 36 that add to 12. Um, the two factors of 36 that add to 12, you've got 9 and 4 for 36, which doesn't work. Um, you've got 12 and 3, which you get 15, that doesn't work. Um, and you also have 6 and 6. 6 times 6 is 36, but adds to 12. And both of these can be reduced um, by dividing out a 3, or yep, a 3, so you get 3x over 2. And you get 3x over 2. So the factors are both 3x plus 2 times 3x minus 2 on the, the left numerator. So now I'm going to do the left denominator. 4 times negative 7 is negative 28. And we're going to stash a negative 27 down below. A 4x and a 4x. One of these must be positive and one of them must be negative. Um, factors of 28 that add, that combine to, that differ by 27 will be a 1 and negative 28. 
Um, I know it has to be positive 1 because it has to be a negative 27. Um, 4x plus 1 cannot be simplified any further. But you can divide a 4 out of 4x and negative 28 to get x minus 7. So this one here can be reduced to x over negative 7. And then the last one we have to do is the, um, the right denominator. So I'll do it right here. 12 times negative 2 is negative 24. Uh, 5x and 5x. Or excuse me. Whoa, 12x and 12x. I messed up. 12x and 12x. And you have positive 5 here. Excuse me. Um, now, owing to the fact that the top is negative, we have a positive and we have a negative. Um, the bottom is negative, so the positive side has to be greater. So factors of 24, where the positive is greater, I could use 6 and 4, but that doesn't work because that's only 2. Um, so I try 8 and 3, and that works. 8 plus negative 3 is in, fa or is in fact 5, and 8 times negative 3 is negative 24. Um, this one, 12x over 8, you can divide out a 4 from both of those. So you get 3x over 2. So the first factor is 3x plus 2. And the second factor, 12x over negative 3, you can divide a 3 out of both. You would get x over negative, uh, a 3 out, excuse me. So you get 4x minus, th minus 1. Minus 1. So then the other one becomes 4x minus 1 on the bottom. And we have done, we have come a long way and done a lot of factoring. So now it's time for canceling. So I have a 3x plus 2 on the top and a 3x plus 2 on the bottom. I have a 4x plus 1 here and a 4x plus 1 here. And then two 4x minus 1s, leaving me to rewrite the only two parts of the expression that are left, which are 3x minus 2 over x minus 7 as my final answer. So thanks for hanging in there with me, guys. Uh, there's some complicated problems, but I just wanted to kind of go over as like as complicated as I could really think of. Um, just remember that in summary, um, the new process is flip, factor, cancel, rewrite. So it's the multiplication process, but first you just have to flip the, um, the fraction that you're dividing by. Um, always look to remove a GCF from a binomial if possible. Um, then factor any trinomials and then cancel any nests. And then only cancel after all factoring is done. Use the factors that you get in order to give yourself hints as to what other factors may be, like what I was doing in some of the previous problems. So that's it for the video, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.